Hey guys and welcome to subtopic 4.1 on energy and specifically this is going to cover the work on fuels and combustion. This is the first science understanding. The complete combustion of fuels containing carbon and hydrogen produces carbon dioxide and water and energy. You'll need to know how to write thermochemical equations for the complete combustion of fuels in which the only products are carbon dioxide and water. So thermochemical equations is something we have covered in stage one chemistry. They essentially outline the energy that is released or absorbed during a chemical process. They do consist of a few other components as well. So they include the mole ratio of the reactants and products, which we achieve through balancing the equation. They include physical states, solid, liquid, gas, or in solution, as well as the quantity of heat energy that is released or absorbed, expressed as a value known as delta H or the enthalpy change. So a general equation for combustion will consist of a fuel reacting with an oxidant. Typically it will be oxygen or oxygen gas. This will go to produce carbon dioxide and water. For one example we've got here is octane. So we know octane is a liquid at room temperature. We know octane can react with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. We can see the states of everything there. We need to balance it, so just as a reminder to balance combustion reactions, we firstly look at balancing the carbons by adding the appropriate CO2s on the right. We can see that there are eight carbons on the left and one carbon on the right here, so we will need eight CO2 molecules or eight moles. Um, we then look at balancing the hydrogens by adding the necessary amounts of water. We've got 18 hydrogens on the left, two on the right, which means we need nine waters. And then we finally balance the oxygens by adding the appropriate number of O2 molecules or moles. So over to the right, we can see that there are eight lots of two, which is 16 plus nine, which gives us 25 oxygens on the right and two on the left. And keep in mind with combustion reactions, this is the only case where we can introduce fractions. So instead of perhaps trying to uh, multiply this whole equation out to get even numbers uh, or to get whole numbers. We're just going to write the coefficient as a fraction over 2. So that would be 25 on 2 lots of O2. And then this will balance the 25 oxygens on the product side. The last thing that we need to include is the delta H value or the enthalpy change for the reaction. So given that there is one mole of octane, um, undergoing complete combustion, this is going to end up um, giving us a value of negative 5,470 kilojoules per mole. The negative indicates this is an exothermic reaction, meaning that it is going to release this energy. For a second example, we've got ethanol, so another carbon-based fuel here with its formula there. We can see it's a liquid at room temperature, so we're just going to write out its unbalanced equation first as such. Um, we need to look at balancing this in very much the same way, so firstly balancing the carbons. So we would see we would need two CO2s on the right. Follow that with balancing the hydrogens, six on the left, two on the right, so that tells us we need three waters, and then we balance the oxygens. And just a thing here is to be a little bit careful because in alcohols like ethanol, there is this oxygen that we have to factor in here. So we can see that there are three oxygens on the left side. We've got four plus three, which is seven on the right. So one thing I typically say is just to remove one oxygen on both sides. So that will help eliminate this oxygen here and one from here. That leaves essentially six on the right, two on the left, which means that we then need three lots of O2 on the left. The last thing is to then include the delta H value. So in this case, it is negative 1,371 kilojoules per mole. For the next science understanding, incomplete combustion producing carbon or soot and carbon monoxide is more likely with longer chain carbon-based fuels. Explain why incomplete combustion is more likely with longer chain carbon-based fuels than with shorter chains. Discuss the undesirable consequences of incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion occurs due to an oxygen deficiency. 
Combustion we have to factor in is a redox process. So what this means is that we can show oxidation numbers of the atoms in our chemical equations to determine what's happening to our reactants, whether they're undergoing oxidation or reduction and to what degree. Here we've got methane undergoing complete combustion. So we've got one lot of methane reacting with two lots of O2 to produce one lot of CO2 and two lots of water. From here we could actually look at determining the oxidation numbers of all of the atoms in this equation. So this is what I've done above here. And of particular note is the oxidation number of carbon. We can see that carbon in methane goes from an oxidation number of minus 4 to plus 4 when it forms CO2. So this represents an increase in oxidation number, which indicates that methane has undergone oxidation. In this case, we can see carbon exists in its maximum oxidation state after complete combustion. So carbon is unable to obtain an, an oxidation number any higher than plus 4. Incomplete combustion, on the other hand, produces or yields carbon or soot and carbon monoxide. So examples of incomplete combustion can consist of methane or methane uh, reacting with oxygen to produce carbon monoxide and water. And just confirm that these equations are balanced. We could also see methane undergoing incomplete combustion to produce carbon in the form of soot as well as water. From here we can look at the oxidation states of each of our atoms. So with the first equation, and in particular if we look at carbon here, it has gone from an oxidation state of negative 4 to plus 2, whereas in this equation here we can see that we've got an oxidation state change from minus 4 to now 0. So these represent lower increases in oxidation number, which means that the carbon in the methane hasn't undergone complete combustion. Another thing just to note is that when you look at the balanced equations, you may have noticed that there are a lower number of moles of oxygen required to produce carbon monoxide and carbon in the form of soot. So this could occur when there is a deficiency or lack of oxygen in the environment to allow for complete combustion. As I mentioned before, carbon has a lower oxidation state of plus 2 and 0 in carbon monoxide and carbon respectively. So this tells us that carbon can essentially undergo further oxidation and in doing so can eventually form carbon dioxide and also release more energy from the reaction. One example that you should all be quite familiar with uh, for incomplete combustion is looking at a Bunsen burner flame. So we know that with Bunsen burners, if we close the air hole, that we end up producing a more yellowy, sooty flame. And as we start to open up the air hole, it converts that yellow sooty flame into a more blue flame, which we know is the heating flame. So opening up the air hole essentially increases the availability of oxygen to combust with our uh, methane in our Bunsen burners, and it allows for a more complete combustion. So we, we can observe that as a more bluish flame, and we also know that this is going to produce um, a lot more heat than our yellow safety flames. Um, I did mention that these can be quite sooty, so we might see that there are um, black smoke particles actually rising from this uh, yellow flame here. We know that incomplete combustion is more likely as the size of the carbon chain increases, but why is that the case? Let's have a look at a few different examples. So coming back to our methane example, uh, undergoing complete combustion um, to form CO2 and H2O. And we'll contrast that with octane here. So again, undergoing complete combustion. We can see between the two, octane is the larger molecule or it has the uh, larger carbon chain. And what we can see is that there is essentially increased demands of oxygen per mole of our fuel. Going from uh, methane, which only requires two moles of oxygen per one mole of methane, whereas for octane, for one mole of octane, you would need 25 on two moles of oxygen to undergo complete combustion. Another reason why incomplete combustion is more likely for 
uh, larger fuels is because as the fuels increase in size, so do their dispersion forces. And this means that there is a reduced ability for the fuel and the oxygen, which is a gas, to thoroughly mix and to allow for complete combustion. A simple experiment we can use to compare between complete and incomplete combustion is to place small samples of uh, an alkane and an alkene, so in this case we've got hexane and hexene in some evaporating dishes. Um, we place a piece of filter paper uh, above it and we essentially ignite them and allow them to combust. And if we do that and we look at the resulting filter papers, we can see that hexane can look something like this and hexene, or more specifically, hexuanine can look like this. You can see that hexuanine has the much darker coloured filter paper here, indicating that it's produced more soot. That means that the degree of unsaturation can also influence incomplete combustion. We could say that increased unsaturation increases the likelihood of incomplete combustion. The reason for this is because the percentage of carbon is increased per mole or per molecule of our fuel. So this places an increased demand for oxygen with these particular molecules. In regards to the issues of incomplete combustion, we can start off and talk about carbon monoxide. So we know that uh, carbon monoxide is a strong binder to hemoglobin, which is a protein that you find within red blood cells. And we know that it's responsible for the transport of oxygen um, through your blood and through your bloodstream. Carbon monoxide essentially ends up being a stronger binder to hemoglobin than oxygen itself. So what this will do is limit the ability for oxygen to be transported by this hemoglobin found on red blood cells. In terms of uh, carbon in the form of soot, so we can often associate it with um, producing these kind of black sooty uh, flames. And we could suggest that they are a form of uh, visual pollutant. They can settle onto the surface of different uh, structures, um, so buildings, but also including plants. And so if you imagine soot is being deposited onto their leaves, then this is going to reduce their ability to photosynthesize and that might affect their growth. One other thing that we can consider is the fact that carbon or soot has the ability to act as a, effectively as a greenhouse gas in the sense that it can trap heat within the Earth's atmosphere. And this graph is just showing you, some of the information from this graph is showing you the impact that things like carbon dioxide as well as methane and black carbon or soot have in terms of this warming effect for the Earth's atmosphere. So we can see it is really second to only carbon dioxide. In this slide, I've just summarized the undesirable consequences of incomplete combustion. So on the left, we can see carbon monoxide binds strongly to hemoglobin in red blood cells. It limits oxygen transport. And then the concerns with this is that it can lead to headaches, dizziness, loss of consciousness, and potentially even death. Uh, carbon in the form of soot, we know is a visual pollutant it can um, decrease the rate of photosynthesis. If we inhale this, it could actually aggravate our respiratory system, and this is more prominent for people suffering from uh, asthma and bronchitis. Um, the inhalation of soot can actually result in the inhalation of carcinogens, which bind to those soot particles. We know that black colored objects are extremely good at absorbing light radiation, so uh, the presence of carbon or soot in the atmosphere can enhance the absorption of light and then that can result in increased uh, warming effect in the troposphere. That concludes part one of this series of videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.